Hello everyone. We will continue the topic validations and substitutions. And in the previous videos, we took the requirement. We created the validation for that particular requirement. We activated the validation and we put the breakpoint into this function module, which is used for calling of the validation. And we put a breakpoint by simply navigating to desktop to and put a, I put a breakpoint into this if condition also, because based upon that if condition, system is calling this particular function module. Now what I will do, I will run FB01 again and I will show you how, how the upper logic of the validation is triggering. So I will simply come out from the debugging first. Suppose I will simply exit. Now we have two breakpoints. Sometimes desktop 2 is very important because it will help us to see the stack. What are the various things calling one by one and how they are calling. So I will go to FB01 transaction code. Now I will put the document date. It is important because now you will understand the full flow in that debugging code. I am putting a different document type. I am putting enter. Now the control will firstly stop onto that if condition. You can see now the control stopped onto that if condition. Now it is checking. Suppose firstly T001D table valid should not be initial means it should not be initial means it should not be null. If I will show you that table, this is T001D table. You can see what is valid. Valid means your name of the validation. Yes. Do we have the name of the validation? Yes. But the name of the validation you gave T type. If I will show you the name of the validation, what we gave it is T type. Now, after that, it is checking your active should be equal to one, one, one means if I will go here. If I will show you the values, you can simply go to F4. 1. 1 means it is active. 2 is also active. That is no batch input. Anyways, there is no need to go, no need to go into that. But 1 and 2 both are active. So it is checking simply. Yes, it should be equal to 1 or it should be equal to 2. So this if condition, true. Now system is calling this particular function module. If I want to go inside this function module, I will do F5. Now I'm inside the function module. This is the breakpoint which I put. Now I will go to the last of this function module. So anyways, I already put the breakpoint there. So I will put the breakpoint again in front of you. And I will do F8. Whenever I will do F8, the system will stop here. I am doing F8. Now, in this particular subroutine, we will be able to find the code which SAP generated based upon our whole process of validation. So SAP is calling this particular subroutine in program this. This is the program. Anyways, it is SAP program. In this program, we will be able to see the code which SAP generated at runtime. Suppose if I will go inside this validation, inside this subroutine, I am doing F5. You all know if you want to go inside the subroutine, you need to do F5. And SAP has given the documentation also Ultimately, this subroutine will call our validation. I am doing F5. Now I did F5. Now I will simply, simply come here. Just see how SAP is doing. In this particular subroutine, again, we have a subroutine. I will put a breakpoint here and I will do F8. 
This is just a clear way to understand because it is not a magic that SAP is triggering. We define the validation and SAP is calling that. There must be some logic behind that which SAP generated and we are understanding what is that particular logic. Now SAP gave the validation name. Now this is our program. This is the program which I just I showed you which SAP. This is SAP program. Now I will go inside this subroutine. Now you will be able to see. Just see what is our step header. We have three things here. Firstly, SAP is going for this particular subroutine. This particular subroutine is for prerequisite. This particular subroutine is for check. This particular subroutine is for the message. Just see how many steps we perform. Prerequisite, check and message. I will go inside this and show you and you will understand how SAP has generated the logic. We will be able to see the logic very clearly. I will put a breakpoint here. I will do F8. Now I will go inside this particular subroutine. Now I will go inside this subroutine. Now just see what is our prerequisite. Just see here what is our prerequisite we put. If I will go here, the prerequisite is DE11. Have you seen SAP generated the logic for DE11? If the DE11 is there, value is true, else it will be false. So it means if your prerequisite is failed, SAP will not do anything at all. This if condition true. Now you can see this if condition true. So it means SAP is setting this to true. Now it is done. Now SAP is checking. If we are getting true, T means true, then SAP will simply go for the check check. Now I will go inside this subroutine using F5. Now just see here, we put a if condition, we put a check. What is our check? That document type should be equal to WE. Have you seen SAP has written a logic for that? Now it is WE, it is not WE because we put what WA. If it is WA, it means we have the false. Now you can see if we have the false, now just see what the message we gave. We simply gave the message. Yes, triple zero three of this particular message class. So SAP simply, simply call it the message. And we are getting this message. We are getting this message. So it is very important to understand that it is not a magic or it is not a game that you did something in the back end how SAP is doing this. So you simply, simply has to go to this particular function module, this particular function module. If I will go for this, anyways, it is for that detailed understanding how SAP is doing this in this particular function module. We have a subroutine and in that subroutine, SAP it has written the logic or I will say SAP is generating the logic. Why I am saying generating the logic? Just see here. Suppose if rather than triple zero three, suppose if I will go for different message. Suppose I will go for triple zero. Suppose anyways, I choose just message. Whenever I will see this, just see the message here. I will go for save. Have you seen what SAP has given the message generating a BAP code? Suppose I will do again. Suppose I am taking triple zero one, double zero one. So I am going for say, just put the I here. If I will go for say a BAP code generation, it means based upon this SAP is generating the code. Now, if I will show you through FB01, if I will come here, FB01. Now, if I will go for this, previously we are able to see triple zero double zero three message number. Now we will be able to see different message. I will directly come there. I will do F8. 
Yes, I'm inside the function module. Yes, I will come on to this subroutine F8. I will go inside the subroutine using F5. I will come to this subroutine. I will go inside this subroutine. Now, if I will show you here, have you seen? Previously, we are able to see 003. Now we have the message 001. So whenever you are doing the validations based upon that, SAP is generating the logic in the background, which is changing. Now, if I will do F8, have you seen? We are getting a different message, but that message is not correct. Our message should be 003. It should be 003. So I will go for save. So what is the summary of this particular video? Extremely important among all the videos because it will help you to understand the process in the system. We put a breakpoint into G underscore VSR underscore validation underscore call function module. In this function module, this subroutine is playing a vital role because in this subroutine, we will be able to see the code, how SAP is generating the code. We are able to see the code for the prerequisite, for the check, for the message. Then I showed you. Then after that, I changed the message number also. Then SAP is generating the code based upon the changes you are doing into the validation. And we are able to replicate each and everything. Now in the next video, I will simply, simply deactivate the validation and we will understand if we will deactivate, will SAP call this validation or not? That part we will understand in the next video. So that's it in this video. Thank you.